Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, February 21st and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at sdroundtable.com over the past week. Um, just in terms of new update, I got a little bit of a slight new configuration. I'm still waiting on the mic to come in, uh, so hopefully that will help a little bit with the sound, but we'll see. Um, I can actually see the frame a little bit better, so things should be a little bit better. Let me know in the comments um, how you like the new setup um, and we'll give it a try going forward. Um, I should be starting the vlog also very soon. I'm um, doing some interviews this coming week and then hopefully I'll be continuing doing that and improve that over time. Uh, first up, there was a possible Google search algorithm update on June 19th. Definitely a lot of chatter, definitely a lot of signals showing that there was an update from various tools as you can see over here. A lot of the tools are showing um, significant changes, um, even little blips. Um, it did seem to die down the day after. Um, Google has not confirmed any update, um, and uh, I guess Google's gonna just say this is normal, um, you know, normal Google changes, so nothing really going on here. Uh, Danny Sullivan said the core update is not the Panda algorithm update, it's not like it. And he said on Twitter, while the core update isn't like uh, Panda of old, and no, it's not like Panda of new either, uh, those remain very helpful to consider about how to improve content generally. Um, again, it's just, um, again, wasn't the, Google, wasn't the Google Panda algorithm update actually integrated to the core algorithm update? So it's interesting to hear Google talk about this and how they actually phrase things. Um, big news this week was that Google stole lyrics from, um, from Genius, the lyric uh, website. Um, it's not just Google, if you look at Bing and Yahoo and other search engines, they all did the same exact thing, but Google obviously got caught uh, for doing that, and they're the big search engine, of course. So what Genius did was basically put into their um, lyrics both straight and curly brackets and use that as some type of Morse code to read red-handed um, in the lyrics. And when you did a search for um, certain types of lyrics, it would actually go ahead and catch Google stealing those lyrics. And then Google responded basically saying, we're gonna investigate this, yada, yada. It's not the first time. Basically, Genius went back and I think a few years ago and said the same thing. Um, Google said, yeah, and then nothing really happened. Um, but with that, um, Google said to Genius um, that um, from now on, instead of us just stealing your lyrics, we're gonna actually show you who's the one who's, who's to blame because Google actually licenses this content. Uh, they licensed this specific lyric that was of question from Lyric Find, um, and Google said, we're gonna go ahead and show you that information. What, what's interesting is Lyric Find posted on their website that um, they actually were contacted by Genius. They asked for more information from Genius. Genius didn't respond, but they do do a lot of sourcing. Maybe one of their people who actually went ahead and actually copied your, your content, show us more examples so we can fix the issue, and supposedly Genius never responded, according to Lyric Find. And then yesterday, I believe Google added, or a day and a half ago, yet Google added the link to the provider. So you can see here, um, in the bottom here, it shows Lyric Find as a link, and actually you click on it, it actually take you to their website. And they're not the only source that Google licenses from, they also license things from, from Music Match and other places. Uh, what was interesting is also, in regards to this, is that um, Behind Blue Eyes is actually a song from The Who, but Google's actually crediting um, a cover of that from just a few years ago from Limp Bits, well, from Limp Bizkit. Um, and Brian White, a former Googler, uh, went ahead and uh, said, he actually just left Google a few months ago, I believe, um, that this is actually a, not a rank, uh, third party issue, it's actually a problem with the uh, ranking team. Um, so, um, I don't know why that's an issue, but basically if you did a search for that, let me do a search right now and see if they actually fixed it. Uh, but basically it would show, now it doesn't show anybody, but it used to show um, on the top um, a different band that actually created it from the 1960s. So The Who was actually the ones who built the song. Oh, it actually does show it up here. It still says Limp Bizkit, so they never fixed it. Um, but again, who should Google credit for this song is the big question. And I found that all whole thing around lyrics very, very interesting. On to SEO again, Google has removed the preferred domain setting in Google Search Console. It's a feature in the old Google Search Console and now it's uh, removed from 
the new uh, from is removed completely, so you can no longer set your preferred domain. Instead, Google says you can either use canonical link attributes, you can use the header with canonicals, you can use sitemaps, you can use 301 redirects, and it basically makes sure your site architecture and your SEO is good. And Google has actually been saying this for years, actually, uh, that you really shouldn't, um, you don't really need to use this setting in Google Search Console. You should just do SEO and, and architecture right. Um, um, and usually most site people don't actually use it, but it's there and now it's, and now it's gone, so it's no longer a feature. Google said the mobile testing tool, the URL inspection tool, the um, rich results tool, the AMP tool, and some other tools will be upgraded to the evergreen Googlebot feature soon. They're actually testing it internally, uh, so we'll see when that happens. But it's, they are in testing it internally, which is good to hear. Um, Google's diversity update, according to Moz, and Dr. Pete basically said, um, it was really a tiny improvement, if anything. He said it would look more to him like a PR maneuver. Um, and he said if you look through the data, at least their 10,000 keyword set, it really had a small change. He said if you looked at the overall data, it was like a 0.49% improvement. If you just looked at sites that have two results, there was like a 2% improvement. So it was really, really minor. Of course, it's all... You know, Google didn't tell us how much of an impact it had in their results, so we're going by third-party data, and third-party data is not always as accurate as obviously Google's data because they have their own internal data, but it's interesting to see them report that information. It's really useful to see. Um, Google does show hidden content, hot content hidden in accordions and in tabs and other ways of hiding content on mobile in as a feature snippet. Google does not show it for search results snippets, they said, but John Mueller did say, we covered this a couple weeks ago, that he does think that Google shows it. And then Brody Clark showed examples of, you can see over here, it's hidden in tabs, but it's showing as a feature snippet. Um, Glenn Gabe showed another example in a tab, you toggle between tabs, and it's actually being used for a feature snippet. Uh, so of course, you could definitely go ahead and use that for feature snippets, but Google will not, supposedly will not show it uh, in the search results snippets themselves, but in the feature snippets, they will show it. Google said they don't have a fixed time for when they will go ahead and uh, um, snapshot your rendered content, but they said definitely go below five seconds. That's one rule of thumb, so keep that in mind. Uh, Google asked uh, on a Twitter poll um, if you would like to see in the Google Search Console internal link report a way to filter and toggle between um, um, no follow links and follow links. Um, so I think about most people actually said, yeah, we want to have that filter. It's not going to be for external links. You're not going to be able to say, oh, all these external links are no follow. These are followed because Google said they would, uh, spammers would have a field day with it. Um, they don't want to give that. But for internal links, they may go ahead and do that. Um, Google said that disallowed URLs via your robots.txt file um, does not affect your crawl budget. Those URLs will not have any impact on your crawl budget. Um, Google just confirmed that. Of course, most of you guys know that anyway. Um, an SEO poll showed that most SEOs are still focused on specifically focused on um, desktop analysis for their SEO. Um, Elena Solis basically posted this poll, almost 1,000 results, and said, um, are you focused on whatever? And 12% only desktop, 20% desktop focused with mobile second, 52% said desktop and mobile equally, uh, and 60% only mobile. You would think SEOs would try to like flip it um, in terms of these responses, but a lot of the SEO tools are still really focused just on, on desktop, uh, which is maybe, maybe why this is the case. Um, Google Search Console performance reports is missing data again, uh, this time for image search traffic between the days of June 5th and 7th. So if you do see a dip in that traffic, that's because um, Google's missing some image search traffic around that. We were talking about FAQs, uh, rich results, the FAQ schema stuff, and how it, last week we discussed how it actually results in a drop in traffic, and that might be good. Um, but if you want to try to increase that traffic, um, Dave actually posted examples of Google allowing things like emojis, links, and Unicode directly in those results. So take a look at here. Here's an emoji with a pizza. Look over here. Here's an actual link you can embed in that. And he, over here is Unicode. Now, of course, I don't think this is going to last much longer. They just showed this example yesterday afternoon. I assume by next week sometime this will be gone. Uh, but it's nice to see SEOs playing, playing around. Uh, Google's testing lots of user interfaces. I, I can't cover it all. I cover what I think is important. Uh, but here I bumped a lot of different tests in there. So one is, you can see here, 
Google's showing a, a Google Shopping car, uh, result with product tabs, and you can toggle between comparison sites. So this shows all stuff in Google Product Search, and if you click on comparison sites, it might show you stuff from Shopzilla and other third-party comparison sites. Um, so here's the comparison site: Shopzilla, Buy Buy, and Sales Stalker. Here's an example of Google finally launching the Google Refine with layers. So you see uh, by birth month and then within birth month you can do by brand and so so forth here's a test of a new mortgage calculator um and there's lots of other tests i'm not gonna go through all of them but if you want to look at google's testing definitely take a look at that um google my business has finally launched some new features one is the short names which we discussed uh, about a month or two ago which wasn't live it was only live for google local guides now anybody or almost anybody could actually go ahead and create a short code for their name which means g dot page slash your short name uh, Google also announced cover photos, more prominent logos, uh, photos to display, and offline materials. So you can have a cool uh, cover uh, photo. You could have a new logo over here. You could do your short name and a lot of other things in here. Um, with that, Google also moved small thanks with Google dot with Google dot com to marketing kit dot with Google dot com. So just keep that in mind. They did not three hundred one redirect it. Um, so some people, SEOs and local SEO business were actually asking about that and it was moved and not 301 redirected. There's been complaints um, over with local SEOs that a lot of um, businesses that were suspended in Google My Business are not being restated, reinstated when they were supposed to. A lot of delays, so definitely keeping that in mind. Um, Google Duplex is being tested um, in mobile search, so here's actually how it looks. Um, you can take a look at this screenshot over here and you can see that when you click on tables for tomorrow reserve tables you get this so it says your google assistant will call the restaurant to request the thing what date how many people what time and do you want to allow for google assistant to pick other times if it's not available um, so that's cool to see google is testing related to your search um, showing in the google post so again Based on the query, the Google posts themselves might be go ahead and um, be customized for you. So these are related to your search based on the query. Um, so another reason to maybe create Google posts, which I thought Google was kind of killing off, but we'll see. Um, Google's, um, so we all know this, Google Maps is a wild, wild west. Fake business profiles are showing all up all the time. And it's finally getting some big media coverage. The Wall Street Journal wrote a big article um, on it called Millions of Businesses Listings on Google Maps are Fake and, Google's, and Google Profits from it. Uh, and a lot of SE, local SEOs were featured in this article. So it's nice to see Google um, getting some attention for their Google Maps spam problems, which has been an issue for a long, long time. And it's finally getting some big media coverage. This is a lot of SEOs are going to have advertising and SEOs gonna have a problem with Google's testing an ad carousel called people also considered and it basically will show competitors here's a gif of it in action so here's Xfinity and now it's showing competitor competitive ads um, from competing I guess companies right here not only that it's also kind of blended with the people also considered versus people also ask um, which is kind of like more of an organic search feature so that's kind of annoying to see and finally, congratulations to the Google Webmaster YouTube channel for breaking 300,000 subscribers. Um, they have over 300,000 subscribers. They have um, over 36 million views on their videos. Compare that to my channel, we only have like 7,000 subscribers, uh, which is minuscule compared to that. But Google, there's amazing video and content on there and it's very, very cool. So congratulations to Google on that. Um, in any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. Everyone have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next. Bye.